brother. Well, it is what it is. Hello, everybody. How are you? This is your girl, Lisa Baxter. You know, I just moved, so I couldn't get that bag out the way. <laughs> so, hey, it is what it is, but I am glad to see you and glad to talk to you. I Today, I'm talking about, I got my little notes here. Got them upside down. How about that? Y'all keep me in prayer. Um, they told me when I went to the doctor last week, I'm doing well, but they have to do a lot of things with my mouth and my gums and stuff, and they may have to cut it out since they won't, um, the swelling won't go down, see? It won't go down, and I, I'm having a hard time with that, and that's very upsetting, embarrassing, painful, hard to chew, partials won't fit, so you know my story, but it's just still. Is this cute or what? Well, anyway, uh, we're talking about thriving and surviving with kidney disease. Or thriving and surviving, surviving and thriving. But either way, you're doing it. How about that? You know, um, well, you know, my father had polycystic kidney disease. Yes, he did. He had polycystic kidney disease. And I had six siblings that were on dialysis two aunts an uncle and a mother-in-law you know so um you know we all had to deal with it you know what i mean i had to learn that polycystic kidney disease is when you have cysts on your kidneys and i had i had whew, i had many and you know poly means multiple and you know a regular kidney can be the size of your fist but a polycystic kidney can be the size of a football you know what I mean? They could get really, you know, really big and really, really heavy. Forgive me for moving around so much, but I can't seem to get some of this stuff out of my view. It was out of my view earlier, but not now. You know what I mean? Um, I did 12 years of dialysis, close to 13. And I've had Hannah next month. It'll be six years that I had my kidney transplant, and I thank God for that, you know? The good thing about my family, even though we had this disease, we still traveled, we still worked, we still owned our own business. We just didn't like nothing to kill us or get us down, so we just kept doing our thing. You know what I mean? We just kept on doing our thing. And that's what you got to do with these sicknesses and stuff. They come unexpected. This was definitely unexpected. You know what I mean? And mouth bleeding at night when I wake up, blood, you know, Shonda. You know what I mean? But, you know, I tried everything talking to doctors, calling doctors, specialists, you know. So these things uh, sometimes even come along with some of this stuff that we're dealing with, you know, bone joint disease and stuff like that. You heard me talk about it. You know, I did laundry and stuff today, and I was also supposed to do another show today that didn't come through, um, technical difficulties with the producer and stuff that we had had some of this out the way. But anywho, um, kidney disease, I believe that kidney disease is, um, it's an unrecognized disease. It's, it's a public crisis, you know, 37 million adults, a population in the United States have it, all right? And you got 90% that don't even know they have it. And you got 850 million worldwide have some form of kidney disease. And it increases every year. You know what I mean? So please get checked out. Find out what's uh, what's going on with yourself, what's going on in your family, what's your family history. You know, know how this stuff is affecting you. You know? Um, where am I at now? First of all, chronic kidney disease, right? Uh, you know, your, the kidneys are so important. You know, it's so important because it moves waste right? It moves toxins and fluids, you know, from the body. It helps maintain your red blood cells. It keeps your bones strong. You know, it helps maintain the right amount of minerals in your body. Yeah. As you know, in dialysis, you lose a lot of vitamins and minerals and stuff like that. So having this uh, chronic kidney disease, you go through these things. You know what I mean? Um, a chronic kidney disease, it, uh, it, it, it usually, uh, you fail, you have um, a failure uh, of your of gradual kidney loss. You're, you're gradually, your kidney is losing the function of what it's supposed to be doing. 
it gradually, you know, loses that function. It's uh, also called end-stage renal disease, chronic uh, kidney disease. You hear people say CKD, you know. Two of the main causes is diabetes and high blood pressure. You got kidney disease as well, of course. You got uh, risk factors, right? Obesity is a risk factor, you know, being overweight, right? Um, it may, it damages the kidneys and smoking. Smoking also damages and worsens the kidney problems you already would have. Sm uh, smoking just makes it worse, you know? Um, and frequent use of meds, over-the-counter meds. And uh, some meds, you know, really do hurt and kill it, uh, kill the, uh, kill the, um, you know, kill the function of the kidney as well. Mm -hmm. They told me, uh, what was it, Advil, ibuprofen. They told me those things was bad. I was eating them things for years, you know, eating them like candy. You know, when you are uh, in a lot of pain or, you know, some of them, some things was given, you know, for different types of pain and, you know, monthly and menstrual cramps and all kind of stuff. So you figure you, you don't know it till later on and you already had a kidney disease. It just makes things uh, terrible, you know. Some of your complications, it weakens the bones. All right. It, it, your bones is easily the fracture. I remember they said, Lisa, stop jumping rope. Don't jump no rope. Don't do this. Don't do that. Because you can fracture your bones. You know me, I was still running, still doing my thing. And I had stuff, you know, that bothered the bones and stuff. Like now I'm more like in pain. I go to physical therapy and stuff now. And one of the uh, pills I take for the transplant has done some different d types of damages as well you know what i mean so i'm like uh you know it, it can be really rough on us all you know what i mean you know uh another thing a complication with uh kidney disease and what have you also it could be a decrease in sexual drive all right erectile dysfunction all right it's also uh reduced infertility it could be a reduced infertility, and it can be a, a pregnancy complication, you know, for a, a risk for the mom and a risk for the baby. You know, they say fetus, but a risk for the baby that she's carrying. You know what I mean? Um, some of the symptoms when you're knowing your, that your kidneys are failing. Uh, oh, man. Nausea. Ooh, I remember that. that nausea. Vomiting. You know, vomiting, loss of appetite. You don't want to eat. You don't want to be bothered with eating. You know, you couldn't taste the food right anyway. It just didn't taste right. And you just was in your own funk with this thing. Metallic taste. Everything tastes that metallic taste in the mouth. No matter how much you brushed your teeth, how much you brushed your tongue, that taste was always there. Um, fatigue and weakness. Feeling weak, feeling tired. Problems sleeping, you're tossing, you're turning, you're tossing, turning, tossing, turning, and stuff like that. And muscle cramps, what? To like the hundredth power. That leg cramp is something else. Oh my God, it's terrible. You don't want that. That's like to the thousand power. You see grown men and women crying over this this cramp when you're, you're having dialysis, even, even when you're on the machine, but even before you even get there. That's a symptom. Yes, it is. That's right. Um, foamy urine. Your your urine looks like suds. Mm -hmm. it looks sudsy, you know, and uh, the swelling of your feet, the swelling of your ankles, you know what I mean? And the itching. Oh, man, I used to hate that itching. That itching was something. I think my, my skin was bleeding because I just, it felt good to scratch it, but you really didn't feel no relief. None. No real relief. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. It felt like ants crawling all over you. Your high blood pressure can be uncontrollable. You don't want that. You don't want that diabetes or the high blood pressure uncontrollable. But your high blood pressure can get uncontrollable. Shortness of breath, you know, and fluid is, you know, getting or backing up into the lungs. The poison is backing up into your system and what have you. Hello, Jared from Warriors Quest. I ain't mad at you. How you doing, my brother? My brother from another mother. Hello, Jeff. Hello to everybody out there. How about that? Hello, D'Angelo. I'm going. All right. Now, you got dialysis treatments as well. 
right? And what dialysis, what the dialysis machine do, it filters, it, it, it's, it's a, it's an artificial kidney and it cleans, it cleans the blood too. But you got to remember, it's not like a regular kidney. A regular kidney that's in your body cleans 24 hours a day around the clock. Bloop, bloop. If you don't go to dialysis, your blood don't get clean. Your kidney that was working, worked no matter what you was doing. You know what I'm saying? But not in this case. That's your little hope. Well, a little hope. Uh, having dialysis. You know, getting on the right road of things. You know, clearing stuff up. All right? You got your hemo. Uh, dialysis machine, and you might you'll do that in center, and then you got your peritoneal PD that you would do at home, but you can also do hemodialysis at home as well. My sister did hemodialysis at home. My brother and sister did PD, you know, peritoneal, you know, and my sister had. She loved that peritoneal. Ooh, she didn't mind. She taught all of us, her children, her grandchildren, me. You know what I mean? And then, uh, you know. And we, you know, we started seeing her and everything. We had to mask up when she would hook up and stuff to the machines and things. You know, we did what we had to do because we family, you know what I mean? We care and we have to be able to do stuff in an emergency at a drop of a hat. There's no time to scratch your head and wonder. You know your family dealing with this. You got to educate yourself about your own illness and educate yourself about your family illness as well. It's important. It can be vital for them and vital to them. You know what I'm saying? But um, my brother was pulling his uh, his his thing out. You know, with the with the uh, the um, the uh, peritoneal. He when he sleep, he said the, he said the, he had the thing. It was like out on the floor, or out in the bed. I'm like, oh my god, what kind of sleep he was doing? He's having a nightmare or what? You know, that was my brother Keith. But De Simone, she loved it. You know, she had a cat and a dog, and Keith had dogs and cats and stuff. Just the dogs. He didn't really care about cat. You know, but those things, you have to be very careful for germs and anything microscopic to get up into your stuff where it can cause you to have an infection. And they both suffered with infection. I don't know where it came from or how, but they did. And they end up back at the dialysis center. But they, you know, they did both. And they had to experience both. Me, I only experienced the center you know, I'm a social butterfly. I had to do what I had to do. You know what I mean? So I uh, went in there and I didn't mind going in there and learning from the people and becoming an advocate in the two centers that I was at. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um, if you have a graph, you know, I had one in my chest here and like over here and I had... Um, something in the groin. I had, oh man, you didn't hear me screaming at your house? I had it in the groin. Um, as well. And you can only do that in the groin while you're in the hospital because it, you have to be very careful with that infection and stuff. And you have to have the, the team to, to, you know, to take care of you with that. You couldn't go home with it in the groin, you know? So, you know, um, the graft involves a synthetic tube that's always, uh, that allows large amounts of blood to flow. All right. Okay, you got your fistula, your AV um, abnormal connection is an a AV abnormal connection between the artery and the vein. I got a fistula. Well, you always see my fistula, but through my shirt, you can see the lump a little or the hump, but it goes zzz, zzz, all the way, you know? So I have the fistula. You know, I learned that uh, grass and stuff clot a lot. You got to get it clean and go to get it clean. And I have done that even with the fistula. I didn't go that often or have to go that often. I protected my fistula, kept it clean and what have you, whatever I needed to do. You know, a catheter could be in the neck. It could be in the chest. It could be in the groin. And it's temporary until you, your fistula or your graft or whatever it is, is matured or what um for, for you to heal because you've had surgery you know, you don't want nobody grabbing that arm, touching that arm. You need that to heal up and everything. So while it's healing, you would get your dialysis here or here or there somewhere because you had to get it. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Okay. To be, uh, it had to be played. Um, now, one thing I learned about the um, patineal, it was placed... Uh, in the belly, but it was placed, you know, like next to the navel. It was placed by a surgeon, so it had to be a surgery in the lining of the abdomen. 
to filter the blood in your body. That was peritoneal. And a transplant, you know, a transplant is usually an organ that's transplanted. You know, for example, a transplant of a heart, a transplant of a kidney, a transplant of a liver. Okay. And I've heard of other things transplant, but that's what I'm mentioning on today. You know, um, let's see here. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, 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 now, you know, you have to get tested. You have to know your family history and work with your team of doctors. One thing I learned is that my regular doctor and my nephrologist and all of them had to know everything about me so they can work together. So if something went wrong, I could talk to one and they all knew. And they all got the picture and the point. I have the, uh, the my cell phone is over there. I guess it's charging. I had made it quiet at one point. I didn't want no noise while I was doing this. But um, I have all of their, their cell phones and stuff. And those are nice doctors to do that for me. I know I sometimes probably get on their nerves. They're so sweet about it. So I'd, I'd have hung up by now. You know what I mean? Or to say, child, please, you know. But they are very patient and nice. And I guess that goes along with their character as well as their profession. But you know, some people in some professions um, sweat, do not uh, care nothing about the profession part of it. They, they don't want to be bothered, they don't want to be bothered. And they find a way to get away. But become educated about your illness. I don't care if it's a cold. You hear me say that a million times. Keep up with your blood pressure and your diabetes. If that thing can cause you to have kidney failure, your, 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 your kidneys to fail, then make sure you keep an eye on it. Make sure you check it out. Whatever it takes to, you know, you know, exercising and moving and circulation or whatever it is, medication, talking with the team, changing your diet, whatever it takes, try it. I know with high blood pressure, I just changed the diet. The thing went away. I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. I was glad too. Then what got me too is I the cyst on the kidneys caused my pressure to go high. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm doing the right thing, blah, 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 blah. But that would, you know, some, certain things kick off something else, you know, you know. And the one thing about with kidney disease and stuff, sometimes it can mess with other things, other, other parts of you, you know, other parts of the body and through the body and then the body. You don't, you don't want that either. You know how you have one little thing wrong with you and that one thing you had made by other things that you're like, what? I like, I never had high blood. I never had diabetes. And once I was taking the prednisone and stuff, they kept saying, you're going to get it. And I said, I ain't getting no diabetes. And I would do everything right, but whatever, you know, do whatever I needed to do. And one day the thing shot high as a kite while I was in uh, um, Pennsylvania with my niece, Tawana, and her kids, Latrell and 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 uh, Latrell and Melody, you know, and them. And it's, it's, uh, it's uh, Cody's birthday today. Hi, Peanut. Happy birthday. He's three. You know, so, um, and they are with Mickey Mouse. I wish I was there. I like Mickey. But, um, yeah, so, um, you know, keep up with your blood pressure. Help spread uh, awareness. Help help us spread this kidney awareness. It's like under rock. You know what I mean? You want more people to know about it. You want more people to care or to get involved with it. So that's a blessing and a help. You know what I mean? Um Use your resources. There are many resources out there. You know, different uh, kidney programs. You got your polycystic kidney disease. You got their national kidney disease. You got the renal network. You got so much out there. It goes on and on. I like Unos. Nice. Just to transplant people. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, the Mayo Clinic. You know, you got all the different uh, type of things out there. You got Trio. You know what I mean? That's another transplant uh, resource organization. And um, you'd be surprised who would give you support or give you information. Some of these places give you uh, money for college and school, help with rent, or give you car fare, pay off a bill, and just give you knowledge. Knowledge about what you're dealing with or what you're struggling with or what you don't like dealing with, you know. But, you know, and, um, you know, do the kidney walks, get involved, give a donation, you know, tell somebody about it, share it on your page, 
do whatever you can. Sometimes people sometimes think sharing is not nothing, but it is. Because if you, I have 5,000 people on my page, bro, if I share something you gave me, which I am a sharer, somebody give me something, I'll share it. I don't have no problem with it. You know, we have a lot of workshops with my job. I share them all the time, hoping that people would take advantage because they're free. You can do it virtual. You can do it in person. You can be somewhere far, but you could still do it. You know what I mean? And get a certificate and get knowledge and use it. You know what I mean? Some of the stuff you could use for a job, you know, use to build up your resume, you know, even to help your household. You know what I mean? Down to the therapeutic arts and crafts to get your head and your mind together. You know what I mean? It can be rough sometimes dealing with not just COVID, but dealing with other stuff, stuff that happened in life, unexpected and expected, and stuff that you was already dealing with. You know what I mean? You know, so get involved. You know what I mean? Do what you can do. You know what I mean? Um, I hate to see children on this and children deal with it. But you see them mamas, them mamas is a great advocate. And I've seen some fathers out there advocating up a storm for their children. And I like that kind of thing. And it can truly be done. You know what I mean? With the advocacy and learning about your disease, whatever it is, because there's so many types and forms of kidney disease. I was like, what? Outpouring? And, you know, I'm not even saying it right, but... I've heard so many that have put tears in your eyes and you want to bring so much awareness. But sometimes when people hear about sickness, they run for the hills or they, you know, turn the deaf ear. They don't want to hear it or be bothered because it's not always pleasant. You know what I mean? But if you educate yourself, you could be able to deal with it better. If you spread some of the love about it, you'll feel good about it. You know what I mean? And, it, you know, you will pray. I pray about everything. I give it to God. You know what I mean? Because this is not easy. It's not easy. Some of this stuff has been tiring and painful, can be depressing, make you want to give up, make you have a headache, you know, you know, and stuff. And I work a full time job. I always did, even when I was on dialysis. And I said that to say this, you guys got to keep going. You got to stay busy. You got to sharpen your tools. You got to sharpen your weapons to beat this thing and live. And my congratulations out there to the people that got a, um, a kidney. And I'm praying for the ones that's waiting. Stay busy while you wait. Hey, Miss Thelma, congratulations, girl. You know I heard about you. I had to text you and everything, Facebook you and everything, and watch your video. I'm very happy when people get their kidney because I remember when I got mine, Hannah, you know, almost six years ago next month. So, you know, I remember when Shane Blanchard got his, you know what I mean, and so, so many others that I know, and Chris Ann is going to get hers. We're going to, we going to shout, we're going to dance when Chris Ann get that kidney. You, you hear me? Uh, it is done. You know what I mean? But I love you guys. Thank you for taking time to listen. Sometimes I just like to do little powwows, little talks, give out a little information, a little bit of resources just to, to uh, give you something that you want to go on. Remember to look up Rise Up East New York. Rise Up E-N-Y dot O-R-G. Jobs uh, information is there. That's our job website. And maybe you want to get in the union or deal with the union. You know, maybe you want training. Maybe you want to volunteer. Maybe you want to do an internship. Whatever you might want to do. Maybe you need a referral for something. You know, housing or something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, something. So we, we want to be able to help. Come and sit down and do some therapeutic awesome crafts and have some fun and make something. You know what I mean? Sit and chit-chat or chit-chat through, you know, through the computer. I don't mind waving at you and talking to you and encouraging you. Thank you for encouraging me back and having my back. It takes teamwork to make the dream work. All right, my Archbishop Roger would always say that to us. You know, so make your dream work. You know, you can live with this and you can do this. And I, I believe in you and I know you can do it. And I'm proud of you for all you've done so far, for everything you had to do and deal with. And the times that people didn't see your tears or see your pain. But we love you and we see it now. And we want to help. So let us do it. Because we're just waiting for you to contact us and we'll help you. 
Come on now, get that nutrition class and come and get that certificate. We even got one for the youth and one for the adults and the seniors. So don't be a stranger. All right? Here for you. All right? This is Conversation with Lisa. This is the Lisa Baxter Show. And this is love from Lisa. Much love, much prayer. Peace. Have a great week. All right? Happy spring. Looking for summer. Whoop, whoop. Good night. Shango. Happy Sunday. Mm -hmm. All right. Again, good night. You guys rock and you roll. Be for victory. Peace.